Hi everybody, Alan Warren here, the RV Wingman, and welcome to today's video. If you are getting ready to sell your RV, I respectfully suggest that you buckle up because the next few minutes are not going to be very pleasant. This is a follow-up to yesterday's video where I was saying that I was trying to gather some information and compare apples to apples on used RV values, according to J.D. Power, who is, uh, many people believe that they are the Bible, if you will, the gold standard of determining what used RV values are. And so J.D. Power puts out three guides a year. They look like this. They're, remember the old phone book? <laughs> it's super thick. Well, this is their used RV appraisal guide. And they've got every RV you can imagine just about in that guide. So they do three guides a year. And the last one for 2022 was from September, October, November, December. Okay, September, October, November, December. I wanted to compare some RVs that are, let's look at RVs that were in this four months, and let's look at the same RVs and see what JD Power says they're worth in these four months. By the way, if you know somebody that's getting ready to sell an RV, have them watch this video, send them a link to watch this video. They may not like it, but I think sometimes the truth, even though it hurts, it needs to be said. And I will tell you right up front, there are no easy answers. If you're underwater, if you're upside down, if you owe 10, 20, $30,000 more than your RV is worth, it's only going to get worse. It is. I'm going to show you here in just a second. By the way, if you've not yet subscribed to Wingman Wisdom, I hope you will. I am a former campground owner, a lifelong lover of the great outdoors, a lifelong camping and RVing enthusiast, and here on Wingman Wisdom, I'm sort of a consumer advocate as well. If you have found yourself in a bad position, like I'm going to show you and talk about, you can contact me. I will do what I can. I, I, I can't promise any more than just to read your email and try to get back to you. Listen to your voicemail and try to get back to you but I want to see you as a happy camper. All my contact information can be found in the description of this video. Uh, also, before I get started, we have a free RV report, and <laughs> I think a lot of people are going to need it. This RV report got one for buyers, one for sellers, and if you're trying to buy an RV or sell an RV, don't get ripped off. There's so many people out there that get ripped off, and it's I think it's of their own doing. I'm trying to help you become a smarter RV owner. So download this free report. It'll take you two minutes to view it, uh, to get to it, to view. It's kind of a long report, but it is already growing as we speak. I'm expanding on what I think is already a pretty good start. So let's look at the values of this cross-section of used RVs, according to J.D. Power, and jump over the screen. This is J.D. Power book value, retail book value. We've got, uh, before I show you that over there on the right, 2018 Pumas. We got a Heartland, 2011, 2016 Keystone. You'll see there's not just one brand. There's lots of brands in here. Lots of them. Jayco, Flagstaff, Winnebago, Puma. I mean, Gray Wolf, Crossroads, Keystone. We got lots of them in here. And if you look at what the value was over on the right-hand side, come on, come on, wingman. There you go. That's what the value on the top of the, Number one, 2018 Puma, uh, fifth wheel, according to J.D. Power retail value, $35,700. That was last book. This whole yellow column, that's what the values were, the last book. Let's look and see what's happened. You think they've gone up or down or pretty much stayed the same? Well, check it out. Look at the blue number. This is the January book right here. Just came out in January. That thirty, almost thirty-six thousand dollar RV, is today worth almost six thousand dollars less. It's uh, this one thirty-five seven fifty to thirty thousand three hundred. Every single one of them. Ooh, that one really Keystone Bullet really dropped in value. But every single one of them has dropped in value, and some more uh, precipitously than others. But my point is, if you look at the every single one of them, and remember, JD Power does three books a year. What's going to happen in the next book? If you're trying to sell your RV, what's going to happen? If it's gone from, I don't know, let's say 39,000 to 37,000, is it going to go to 35, 34, 33? It's, it's not going to go down forever, but it is going to go down too dang fast, especially if you want to sell it, and especially if you owe money on it. So let's look at the over average overall decline. Got over here on the right-hand side. Come on. 
a 13.1% decline in these 23 RVs when you compare the exact same RV in the last book and this book, a 13.1% decline. To me, that is not surprising. I think that the values were overinflated for a long, long time, and dealers have been using those values to convince you, man, your RV's worth all this much money. It's good for J.D. Power because the dealers pay J.D. Power for this little guidebook. It's good for the banks because the banks loan you more money. But when the real value finally shows up, and it always does, the real value shows up, what happens? 13% <gasps> decline. Had a lady call me not long ago, $40,000 upside down, buried in an RV. A dealer buried her in that RV. She did it of her own doing, though. She signed the bottom line. I always say, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Let me tell you something. I think that the teacher is appearing right now for too many people. Now, here's what I don't want you to do. Please don't do this. Please don't use your home as an ATM, unless it's a last resort. Many people are taking out these home equity loans because they can get a, a, a lower interest rate note, lower the payments down, wrap it up maybe in your mortgage. And then and, and the lender, the loan officer is going to convince you that, man, you're saving $200 a month for 30 years. Don't do that unless you absolutely have to. The bank doesn't want your RV back. They don't. They just want you to make payments on it. Stop spending money. If you're in debt that far and, you, and you're worried about holding on to your RV, stop going to Starbucks every day and spending five bucks. You have to start scaling back. I'm telling you, I believe that we are entering a very dark, very, very questionable, murky place in our country. The economy, yay, it's all great. I don't think so, but that's just me. Wouldn't it be better to be safe instead of sorry? How many sorry people are out there that they're looking at these numbers right now and going, oh my God. Oh my God, what's happened to us? If you can hold your RV, if you enjoy RVing and camping with your family, hold on to it. Go to your bank and try to negotiate something. They don't want your RV back. All they want is your money. Stop spending money. One of the worst things you can do, and I promise you, I know people that have done this. They've been upside down in their RV, oh, say $20,000, and they've gone back to the big chain retail store, and they've explained the situation. The retailer says, no problem. You see that good-looking unit over there? We can get rid of that debt for you. Get, move it away. You won't have to pay that $20,000. You're going to buy that one over there. We'll just roll it into that other RV. Don't do it. You will be doubly screwed. Don't do it. Put the brakes on. Stop spending the money. Start facing reality. You're going to have to pay the money back or give the RV back and ruin your credit. There is no easy way forward. Somebody, you know, people say, well, how come you're, you, why can't you just say good stuff? Because life is filled, you, it's easy to see the good stuff. It's hard to see this and it hurts. I've been in these situations before in my life. I was younger and I'd buy a new truck. My dad said, you're going to lose money. What do you know, dad? <laughs> he knew a whole lot more than I did. I'm not trying to yell at anybody. I promise I'm not. I'm trying to suggest that you're careful. I talked to yesterday in yesterday's video about how deer farmers are able to go into and literally touch these great big deer with these antlers that could kill them. And if you want to watch that video, a link to it is in the description of this video. But it's easy to herd deer. It's easy to herd people. All you have to do is know how to push the buttons. And those really slick salespeople, they know how to push your button. They're kind of like cult leaders. You go, I would never fall for that. Don't be so sure. I promise you, it's easier to be misled than you have any idea. Then you wake up like these people are waking up and saying, oh my, you know what? So there are no easy answers. Go talk to your lender. Sit down and have a rational discussion with your spouse or your partner. Don't blame either one of you. Got, you're shouldering this thing together. You will get through it. It is going to be painful. My suggestion is hold on to your RV if you can. Go camping, being outdoors, being close to your creator, being with your family and those you love, even though you got a pain in the butt payment for a long, long time, is better than having the, the deficit that you're going to have to pay and no camper at all. So if you can afford to hold on to it, hold on to it. Again, the free RV report, you can get one for the, if you're selling your RV or you're buying an RV, if you're a buyer right now, you're looking at used RVs, be very careful. Some of these RVs, they look great. They're not so much. 
They're not. People didn't take care of them. They've got issues, even though they're only a year or two old. You may want to think about getting a, a certified third-party inspector to come out and take a look at it before you sign on the dotted line. You know, there's not a person out there, I think, that when they bought their RV, they go, man, we just got screwed. There's not a one. But there's a lot of them out there later on and go, oh, what did we do? So be smart. Do your homework. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear, and there are a whole lot of teachers out there, and hopefully I'm just one of many that you will listen to. Drop a comment below. I will do my best to make tomorrow's video a little bit more optimistic. But thank you so much for watching. I am Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. Be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave your good manners at home.